Hello, friends. How are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. My name is Ruel Gaviola, and this is Meeple, the latest addition to our family. Meeple, say hi to everyone. <laughs> the uh, technical issues that I was having earlier, I'm going to admit it was because of our little friend here. Uh, Meeple is, um, was uh, barking because Michelle just took off to work. I uh, actually took off to work a little while ago, and Meeple would not stop barking, and she was running around. But she's calmed down now. Uh, Meeple, uh, as in the component. Yeah, here, I'll type it in. You know, I need to come up with a uh, little command for Meeple. Um, but this is a Meeple. Oops, I just spelled it wrong. This is the first time Meeple. I was hoping to uh, uh, have Meeple uh, join us last night on a stream. Uh, Michelle and I were going to do um, Lego building. But someone was a little too active, and um, Michelle and I ended up taking a nap afterwards. And by the time we woke up, it was like, oh, it's time for dinner. And then it was like, oh, we're way too late to stream. So, yeah, Meeple is two years old, um, or almost two years old. Uh, she is a rescue pug. Uh, we rescued her from the Pug Nation Rescue of Los Angeles. I want to shout out all of them out there. They were wonderful. And actually, Michelle and I, we will be adopt. We have adopted Meeple, and we're adopting Meeple's brother, uh, Mookie. Uh, he'll be here in about a week or maybe two weeks because he, unfortunately, he got sick right before we we're gonna pick them up, and uh, he had a respite, uh, upper respiratory uh, thing. So they put him in ISO there at the uh, at the um, uh, rescue, and they said he's okay. He's just you know they they can't release him until he's a hundred percent. But here's Meeple. <laughs> um, hi, Meeple. She's she's a she's such a good girl. She's been uh, awesome. But, you know, we're we're still getting used to each other, um, learning each other's uh, habits, and you know, um, trying to get her on a schedule. You know, oh, what's that? What are you barking at? Oh, there's her bark. If, if you remember our our, our um uh, <laughs> if I remember if you remember our uh, former pug Bruno, rest in peace. He he didn't have much of a bark. This this little girl has a bark. I mean, what are you barking at, people? Oh, she wants to go. Okay, so say bye to everyone. There's Meeple, folks. Bye, Meeple. Wow, it's it's. Uh, she really, she she really misses Michelle. She she instantly bonded with Michelle. But thank you, friends, for hanging out. There is your first look at Meeple, and um, want to say hi to Bing, the first one here, and uh, Variant Hex is here. Had been in Mania. Uh, Jimmy Glazer, yes. Uh, there is Meeple. Of. Uh, Bottom shelf uh, has says hello puppy and uh, thank you. Um, Variant Hex says uh, or Bing says I suffer from hearing loss. Oh, certain words blur together. Fun from going up on a farm. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Hi to living nice in LA. It's Wednesday. Yeah, I got to see Meeple. Thank you. Um, she, I don't know if you can hear her. She's just barking at the door right now. Once Michelle left, she just started barking. Then she quietly came in here, sat on my lap. And then she was, she's back out barking again. She was actually here yesterday. Um, before I was, I did the Rado stream yesterday. She was sitting here. My lap is, you know, cause this is the studio slash office. So I'm typing away and she just sat on my lap for like an hour, just quietly sleeping away. It was really cute. Uh, but now she's getting a little more comfortable in the house. So I, I see her running around. So if I have to, you know, take a quick break, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking care of uh, the pug. But uh, thank you for joining me this morning. What I do on Wednesdays, friends, is Words on Wednesday. And what is that, you may ask? Glad you asked, Ruel. Um, the Words on Wednesday is where I focus on um, word-based games, uh, board games, and I also read uh, excerpts from books and um, graphic novels. And I've got a couple of uh, things here today I'd love to share with you. Um, what are we going to be playing today? I'm going to save this for last. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through a couple of books and I'm going to do, um, I have a special surprise, but I, what we're going to end up with is medium, a wonderful, they call it a mind reading, uh, party game, fantastic party game. One of my favorites that we discovered during the pandemic. Um, I think it was two years ago. Uh, thank, I want to thank greater than games for sending this out to us. Michelle, Lauren, and I love this game. We had a lot of fun with it. And what I want to do is try it here with you all in chat. I there's a, I think there's a way we can do this where we're just gonna uh, I'll just look at the chat what you know the word that you come up with and compare it to mine. We're basically trying to read each other's minds. So what we um, and I'll get into it a, as we uh, get to that part of the uh, show. But I'm gonna save that for last, the best for last, right? Although there's a lot of great things we got planned right now. So um, Bing says baseball starts tomorrow. Your dogs look great. My cubby's not so much. Oh, 
being at least both of our teams have won championships in the last you know few years. So you know, I was when the Cubs won the World Series, I was on, I was rooting for the Cubs that uh, you know that year. It was the one year I root for another team besides the Dodgers because we all know the you know the the the, cur the curse and everything and all that silliness. Hi, are you coming back? Okay, you want to say hi? Okay, people. So. You know, congrats to your Cubs a few years ago. I, I don't know how long ago. It seems like it was just yesterday, but at the same time, it's probably longer than that. Uh, but the Dodgers, of course, the 2020 World Champions. And um, we got Freddie Freeman. Come on, what else can I say? Uh, go, uh, LF Gomide says, hey, Ruel, have you ever heard of a BG platform called Board? I have not. Thank you for the first time, chat. I have not heard about that. Um, any info would be uh, appreciated. Yeah, Doggo, this is Meeple. Uh, we have, um, so of course, you know, we're a board game family. There was no other name. Uh, this was actually um, a rescue pug, and Meeple was formerly known as Louise. And as much as we like the name Louise, I mean, one look at her, and she's like, that, that's Meeple. It, it's Meeple. And oh, she's going to sleep. Um, and then her brother is originally named Danny, but we're changing the name to Mookie because not only do we love board games and Meeple, we love the Dodgers. So, of course, Mookie. Our favorite baseball player. Hi, Hornets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I only got one hand down, right? Oh, Meeple. Yeah, she, this is exactly how she slept the other day. So I was like trying to type. Oh, it's, it's wonderful having a, a, a pug back in the home. Uh, tell you what. Um, yeah, we're loving it. Uh, I'm going to take uh, show you a quick look at what we've got on the table. So we've got medium. I'm playing that. Um, I'll try to keep my keyboard off the screen, but. As you can tell, I've got a, a pug in my hand, so it might be a little difficult. But we're going to take a look at uh, The Legend of uh, Anti Po by Xing Yin Kor. Wonderful graphic novel. I've already read this, but I wanted to share it again. I actually, this copy, I bought um, immediately. Like when she had, when they had mentioned it was coming out, um, you know, instantly uh, bought it on Amazon. Um, I think it's through Penguin. Yeah, it looks like it's a penguin, but anyways, uh, I'll share. It's a wonderfully uh, illustrated and written um, book. I uh, highly recommend it. Also, this is a Kickstarter that I just received, Letters to Margaret, um, by Haley Gold. If you know me, folks, you know how much of a crossword geek I am, and I had to, this was an insta back for me. This is a graphic novel, okay, about crossword puzzles. So literally, before every... Um, chapter you have a crossword puzzle to do they, i don't know if this was an original crossword puzzle from uh the new york times i believe it was but it's set back in the day uh margaret was a character uh, is a character that was based on i believe a former crossword uh, puzzle editor of the new york times so we'll talk about that a little more and this is cool because it's about a relationship so you have letters to margaret and then on the other side you have this side where you go this way a uh, very very interesting and we have a um raid thank you marky mark for the raid uh welcome friends this is tabletop tonight and actually it's actually wards on wednesday my name is ruel gaviola and this is meeple our pug who is sleeping in my arms uh we just rescued meeple from the or not rescued but we just adopted meeple from the pug nation rescue of los angeles marky mark thank you for the raid let me know what you're up to i, I saw you briefly this morning when i logged in uh marky mark folks wonderful streamer if you're not following him already please uh follow marky mark uh thank you uh love to see you and your new pup oh thank you alone shark yeah good to see you alone shark yeah this is uh meeple she is sleeping in my arms she's such a little cute little baby girl um gomite says uh, it's a mobile app ios and android to play on uh, board games their idea is to play locally using a smart tv as your board and the phones as your hand resources or fully remotely using only the phones oh Initial state, but I think it might be interesting to try it live someday there. Okay, I'm going to click on that link. Thank you, uh, LF Goma. I'm going to click on that right now. It says I couldn't reach the web. Of the webs. Oh, it's their Instagram. Got it. Okay, so let me... Can you all hear her snoring? She, she's got this cute little snore. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I will check that. Thank you, uh, LF uh, Goma, for that. I will check that out um, when I'm offline. Uh, Marky Mark says, how are you doing? I played a... Curse to golf, and then ended with a round of the Wheel of Enormous Proportions. Uh, my favorite Jackbox. Oh, cool, Jackbox. I haven't played Jackbox in a while. I need to do that soon. Um, so, hi, Duchess. Good to see you as well. Uh, again, this is Meeple. I don't know if y'all can see us. Uh, she's snoring. Wow, she just crashed out. Oh, my gosh. And good, af good or afternoon, uh, Amon. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. She's going to put her head right in my arm. 
there, the crook of my arm. Hi, Giggles. Uh, <laughs> what I'm trying to do today, folks, I don't know if it's going to happen now. With, we got a little pug here. So, anyways, I'm. Words on Wednesday. We've got The Legend of Auntie Poe. We've got Letters to Margaret. And then I got this from Unsolved Case Files. Uh, this company does these uh, little immersive, um, not really an escape, uh, escape room ish type experience where you need to solve this case. And it's this is how it showed up on my door, on my doorstep. It is literally a, a bag, a sealed bag that I'm gonna have to rip open. And based on what we have here, we're gonna have to solve a crime. Apparently, Harmony Ashcroft was uh, murdered by somebody. And um, here's the back of it here. The murder mystery game that lets you be a cold case detective. So it's gonna have all these items here with some suspects and you have to figure it out. Uh, sealed by K. Grayson, date sealed, blah, blah, blah. So it looks really fun. I wanna thank them for sending this over. What we're gonna do, we're not actually, actually gonna play. I'm gonna open it up and then we are going to just take a quick look at some of the things in here. No spoilers, I don't wanna spoil it for anyone. Um, so we won't be actually solving the case, but I just wanted to uh, give you a, a look at that. So that's what we got on, on tap today. These three items, uh, a graphic novel, another graphic novel with crosswords, um, a unsolved case file that we're gonna not really solve, but we're gonna take a look at. And then the game Medium, which we'll, uh, we'll play in a little bit. Um, I've got a pug in my arm, so I don't know how this is gonna do. Am I gonna put you on the uh, in your little box here, Meeple? She's, she's knocked out, folks. Uh, let's see, F, uh, oh, there's the link right there. Perfect. Thank you, um, yep, got it. Board game platform, huh? Has anyone else used this? This looks actually pretty cool. Uh, Marky Mark, no worries. Thanks uh, for the raid and uh, get some lunch, my friend. Enjoy your lunch. Okay, I am going to try to... Wow, Meeple. Do you wanna go in your gown, baby? Okay, let me see if I can. I'm gonna, excuse me for just a second, friends. I'm gonna put Meeple down here. I have this little uh, box that oh, we're hoping that she would sleep in while I work, but yesterday she just wanted to sit on my arm like just like today. Uh, Dean Oga says, can you put a cushion uh, or hoodie where your arm should be? Oh, maybe, I, you know what? I'm gonna put her on the um, ground, or on the, on the little box here, her little bed, so. Okay, Maple, come on, baby. Good girl. Wow. All right, so Meeple is in her little bed right now. Um, she's a little groggy. She's like, oh, why, why'd you put me down? I don't think I, I'm, I'm covered in a pug, a pug, pug, <laughs> pug fur right now. And um, oh, we, we, we love having Meeple here. And we can't wait to meet her brother, Mookie, uh, who will be here hopefully in a week or two. Uh, hope she's uh, better, or he's better. Okay, so I, I'm just setting up medium. Um, actually, I'll put that on the side. Let, let's jump into it, friends. I want to thank you all again for joining me uh, for Words on Wednesday. Uh, let's take a look at the first item here. I'm gonna, let's look at The Legend of Antipo. Uh, this is now available on um, Amazon or wherever you uh, wherever you may buy your uh, graphic novels and books. Um, so it is from, I believe, Penguin and... Uh, to show you off, off, I mean, Shing Yin Core is absolutely uh, just so talented, folks. Uh, I just, uh, it's it's crazy how talented they are. And oh, Meeple just got out of bed. Do you want to come back up, baby? Okay, she's coming back in the lap. Hey, come on. She's having none of that bed. Okay. Okay. Amon says words are interesting. With a few of them, you can create worlds. I like that. Yes, yes, you can. Okay, uh, Meeple, what are you gonna do, baby? All right, so here, I'm gonna, I'll read the little um, intro part here, and um, okay, here. Oh, she wants my arm down here, okay. Wow, you gonna get comfortable? You comfortable? Okay. Okay, I'll put my arm right there for you, okay. So, you can make your own heroes. In a Sierra Nevada logging camp in 1885, 13-year-old May bakes the most delicious pies and tells the best stories about Auntie Po, a gigantic elderly Chinese matriarch who could probably cut even more trees than Paul Bunyan. In the midst of racial tumult following the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act, May tries to remain blissfully focused on her job, her close friendship with B, the camp foreman's daughter, and her stories. 
until one day Antipo and her giant blue water buffalo Pepe come to life to help Maid navigate the difficulty and politics of lumber camp work and her growing romantic feelings for B. An exploration of who gets to own a myth, the legend of Antipo is a hopeful coming of age story about how immigrant communities hold on to tradition while staking out their place in America. Oh, hi, uh, wait, oh, uh, Sass Queen, yeah, hi, welcome. Uh, so I am just, uh, I'm giving a little short preview of The Legend of Antipo, and we have Meeple, our new pug, uh, in my lap. I'll, I'll introduce Meeple, reintroduce Meeple in just a second. Um, so here is, I'm just going to give you some of the artwork here. This is wonderful. So Xing Yin Kor, uh, they had um, done a ton of research on Paul Bunyan myths, and we were talking, um, we did this uh, panel I think a year or maybe a year and a half ago together where we talked about games ga and uh, they talked about game design i talked about content creation and uh, they had shared this really cool story of just how much work went into this so seriously so much um uh it was funny they were talking about how they um basically just got totally into the paul bunyan myth lumberjacks that whole culture and then they had uh, fused that with uh chinese american history from that time you know the, these are the immigrant workers who did a lot of the unsung labor right so it's a really great story um and I, the art is so cool so i mean as you can see i'm just gonna read a couple of pages here folks chapter one this is a story about stories this is a story about gods and men the dinner bell is one of my jobs i have a lot of jobs so this is may every night my father and i feed a hundred lumberjacks as you can see, here's here's the entire map of the, the camp. We also feed 40 Chinese workers who do not receive board. And so far, there, there's her interaction with her father. And then you, you're gonna later on you're gonna come and meet her friend B. And it's a it's a wonderful coming of age story, but with that all the history uh behind it too, especially with the uh the racial um tensions and climate of that time very i mean just a very very uh, excellent i mean highly recommend uh checking that out okay what i'm gonna do is hi friends for just joining us um this is meeple in my lap i'm gonna put there she is she's sleeping in my lap that's that's what she does meeple you want to say hi to everyone she's she's knocked out um uh, michelle and i uh, adopted meeple from pug nation rescue of los angeles um not yesterday the day before yesterday uh, yesterday, uh, Tuesday, right? Yeah, yesterday was Tuesday. Um, we were gonna have her on stream as we did Legos, but after playing with her all day, Michelle and I just knocked out. We took a nap and then we woke up around dinner time and had to eat dinner. And then by then it was too late to stream. We were like, yeah, forget it. We, we just, we love hanging out with Meeple. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Saskatoon, we love her so much. And what uh, what's really cool is um, not only is Meeple join our family, but her brother Mookie will be joining our family in about a week or two. Um, Buki was, we were going to pick both of them up, uh, on Monday, but Mookie got sick. So he had a uh, upper respiratory, um, problem. Um, so they wanted to keep him in isolation for at least a week, make sure he's all clear. And then when he's ready to go, we'll bring her, uh, bring him back. So yeah, two puggies. I was super excited. Uh, Games of Grub, thank you for following. We do analog alerts here and we have this analog alert that I would normally do. It's Felicia the follow fish, but I've got a pug in my arms. I, I can't do anything uh, right now. So thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going to get back. This is Words on Wednesday, where I take a look at graphic novels, books, uh, uh, word-based games and more. So we just looked at the Legend of Antipo, Shingen Core, author and illustrator. Please check it out, folks. Wherever you get your uh, graphic novels at, I got my copy. I bought it on Amazon. So wonderful, wonderful story. Um, let me see. I'm just gonna put this over here on the side. Next up, actually, I could put it up here. Cool. Next up is Letters of Margaret by Haley Gold. Um, this was a Kickstarter from last year. And um, I immediately backed it because it's about crossword puzzles. Um, and actually, you know, I showed this earlier, but I will show it again. Each chapter starts with a New York Times crossword from, I believe it's around the time that the characters, these uh, characters were uh, were living, I think. Um, I, actually, I haven't even read it yet. So uh, every story has two sides. This one literally so. In this crossword based tale told from dual perspectives, Discover what happens when worlds, words and worlds collide. As you can see, here's one character, and then you, you literally turn it over, 
and there's the other character, right? Um, this is from Lone Shark Games, and uh, this was uh, written by Haley Gold uh, with puzzles by Andy Kravitz and uh, Mike uh, Selenker. Now, Mike had some uh, things go on last year. I, uh, there's some, uh, you know, some, uh, how, do, how do I put it, uh, issues or the, just some bad stuff went down with Mike, and he's stepped down or stepped away from uh, this project, uh, which I think was the right thing to do. Uh, he needs to focus on uh, getting better and uh, doing better as far as, uh, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I won't comment on anything else like that, but we're gonna keep the focus on Haley Gold, who is the uh, uh, illustrator and writer of this. Um, as you can see, here's one character with this uh, little Oreos here. Um, Games of Guard says, no worries, our Boston Terrier likes to do the same thing, nice. Uh, I grew up with a dog and she was such a kind soul. I'm on, yeah. We, we get it. We're doggo people. We love our dogs. We had a, a pug named Bruno um, who unfortunately passed away last November. Um, it, it was unexpected and it really hit us hard. We were we were devastated, to say the least. Um, and we, we didn't know if we were going to be, you know, adopt another dog. Um, but last month we started, we, we felt like it was time. And we started looking around at the different places where we could adopt. And uh, Michelle came across this post on, uh, we, we both follow Pug Nation Rescue of LA. We've followed them for years. And actually a friend of mine used to volunteer for them many years ago. And we, we you know, we just always had on our radar. And, but you know, last month, uh, let, let me switch back to this, this scene here. Yeah, so last month we decided, okay, it's time, Let, let's, you know, start looking and um, it, Michelle found this one post on Pug Nation and it was uh, Meeple and Mookie who are originally named Lin, uh, Louise and Danny. Uh, they were, um, their, the story was um, their owner had to relinquish them. Uh, they're under two years of age, each of them. I think um, uh, Louise, who is now Meeple, is about almost close two years. And then Mookie, who will, who will be coming home uh, hopefully in a week or two, formerly Danny, uh, he is about a year and six months. So they're still both young. Uh, and, I mean, Meeple immediately bonded with Michelle on the ride home. Yesterday we were in L.A., brought, or on Monday, brought her home, just immediately bonded. And I've been bonding with her during the day when I'm work. I work from home. And uh, Michelle, when she leaves, uh, she left this morning for work. And Meeple was just barking and barking. That's why I started this stream a little late. But um, Spitzkin says, did I miss uh, puppy photos? No. Um <coughs> I, and, oh, hi, uh, Gab. Good to see you here. I'm going to, I have Meeple on my lap. So Meeple, I'm going to push back here. There she is. She's sleeping. She's knocked out. Uh, this was what we did uh, yesterday. Um, roll for crit live. Hello. Yes. We're so, so fired up. So Meeple's here. And then her brother Mookie will be joining us. Um, maybe, hopefully in a week, maybe two weeks, um, depending on, oh, did or, no, she's not waking up. So I've got a, a little pug on my lap. Let me know in chat if you have a dog in your house or your life. But uh, thank you. Congrats on New Edition. Yeah, we're we're so thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. And of course, Lauren, our daughter, came over the night that we got Meeple. And uh, they bonded as well. So, so nice. Uh, Amon says, I am a bit hyped for next week because uh, folk, uh, there is a D&D &D session zero. And we're... Oh, nice. Uh, work the mind of my changeling. That's always... I, I was... That's such such a thrill, right? To start a new session or campaign D and D, get that session zero going, so you can lay the groundwork for your game. Congrats, that's awesome. I hope you have a wonderful campaign. Uh, I'm gonna get back to talking about these books. So we talked about Legend of Poe and to Poe first. Now, the Le Letters of Margaret. <coughs> Let's take a look at the intro here. So we have a string of pearls, and here's the chapters and stuff. Um, so in the New York, the New York Times spent the 1920s condemning the crossword craze and spent the 30s forecasting its imminent death. That's funny, right? A premature obit concerning that by 1941, the New York, New York Times was the only major metropolitan newspaper to not feature a puzzle. But this all changed on Sunday, December 7th, 1941. The Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service bombed the U.S. Naval Base at Pearl Harbor prompting the Times Sun, uh, Sunday editor, Lester Markle, to write to the pu paper's publisher, Arthur Haggs Solzberger, we ought to proceed with a puzzle, especially in view of the fact it is possible there will now be black, bleak blackout hours. To support his claim, Markle attached a memo from Margaret uh, Farrar, the former crossword uh, editor at the 
then uh, by then folded New York World. I don't think I have to sell you on the increased demand for this type of pastime in an increasingly worried world. You can't think of your troubles while solving a crossword. She was right. It wasn't a hard sell. On February 15, 1942, the Times debuted its Sunday Puzzle, the editorial byline occupied by Farrar's name where it was to remain for 27 years. So here's a young Margaret Farrar, a photosy of Will Shorts. Oh, if you know uh, Crosswords, folks, you know that name, Will Shorts, a highly, highly um, respected crossword editor puzzle for many, many, I'm, I'm assuming decades now, uh, years. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, crosswords puzzles. Uh, I think he's edited a bunch of books as well. Yeah, Will Shorts is the man. That is right, Bountiful Gamer. Thank you. Um, and then I'll continue. I'm just going to read the intro, folks. <clears throat> so she was there for 27 years. Uh, throughout her tenure at the Times, Farrar published puzzles written by people from all walks of life. Her regulars included a sea captain, a New York Philharmonic violinist, and several convicts who needed a way to pass the time while doing time. But it wasn't just her regulars that merited her attention. Even the most hopeless of submissions received encouragement. Mara Jacobson recalled, One day I was sick in bed and I decided to try to make up a puzzle. It was a terrible puzzle. I had I had made up words. I did all sorts of things you didn't do. <clears throat> but Farrar didn't toss the troubled grid. Instead, she sent Jacobson's editorial notes. I cannot find a few of these words. If you want to try again, why not do this? A revised version of the puzzle appeared in the paper on December 17, 1954. And like that, Farrar inspired, an, inspired another career in crossword construction. Not really. After this brief flirt flirtation, Jacobson stepped away from crosswords. It wasn't until 1971, when she found herself bed bedridden due to a car accident injury, that crosswords and Farrar worked their way back into her life. The retired Farrar sent her a get well card filled with blank graph paper. Jacobson must have gotten the hint. Her puzzles returned to the pages of the, of the Times, and by 1980, she had become the official crossword constructor for New York Magazine. Jacobson's witty puns and expert craftsmanship er earned her a devoted fan base. Will Shorts even dubbed her a national treasure. So it must have been fate that caused puzzles to keep weaving their way into her life. Fate and a few letters from Margaret. And then we go to chapter one, the snowflake. Again, we're just giving a quick little uh, overview. And you have the New York Times crossword folks. I, I, I'm i okay, as I get into this, I'm curious to see if these were from uh, that time period. And actually, no, it wasn't. Okay, so I can tell uh, number seven or number 16, Cheers Mailman Cliff. So that's 16 across, that's gonna be Clavin. I actually uh, printed this out, so when I backed it, uh, in addition to the actual book, you got a PDF file so you could print out the crosswords. So I, I was hoping to do one today, but I've got a pug in my lap, folks. So we don't know how this is going to go. Um, as you can see here, we're going to look at the characters. Uh, okay, so this is set in the modern di day period because we have a Trader Joe's in the background here. And uh, these characters, um, Oreos off the grid. Yeah, uh, I'm assuming this is, well, This I'm going to be looking forward to this because it's going to be a crossword based uh, story with crosswords in it um, and then you flip it over to the other side and then we have this character uh one side of a crossword puzzle right a story right uh so there's this chapter one does this also have a crossword it does nice and so this is from this character's point of view uh we'll be reading that story so i'm assuming uh, yeah I, I believe this is the first i don't know if you're supposed to go in any particular order but i'm going to start with this character and go from here uh, Roll for Chris says, jo Jonathan just finished the book. Oh, I'm curious what your thoughts will be. When you oh, okay, cool. I uh, hopefully he liked it. I, 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 you know, I backed it pretty much just because I like crosswords and look. I mean, I love graphic novels as well, so I'm really interested in this. Uh, Amon says, uh, as a hobby writer and world builder, I use mind maps to uh, flesh important characters out. Interesting when you use similar words at start and see how they have different thoughts about. It. Oh yeah, very yeah, very uh, very cool. Um, sorry, my mind. Uh, this pug is I don't, can, can y'all hear the snoring she's got a little snore going on uh it's distracting but in a cute way <laughs> so legend antipo shingen core legend market haley gold um i know this one's out on at retail this one i believe went to retail i'm not sure if it's on retail it might be at the the loan shark uh, games website uh maybe you can buy copies there 
Uh, but those are the two things, uh, two books I, I want to share with y'all. Uh, next up is, hey, I'll do this, put this one here. This was sent to me by unsavedcasefiles.com. Uh, they sent me this case here. It is an unsolved case. We are going to be a cold case uh, detective, folks. Now, we're we're not going to uh, actually solve this, but I'm going to open it if I can get my, oh, this pug. I, I've got to take care of the pug. Let's see if I can open it with one hand. Uh, excuse me, baby. Okay, you all right? Meeple. Okay, Meeple. Uh, say hi, Meeple. There's Meeple. Open up the case. Okay, you're you're okay. You want to see? Oh, you want to go up on the table? Oh, you're gonna help me. Got it. Good girl. <laughs> yeah, hi Meeple. Everyone say hi to Meeple. Alright, Meeple. No, that's not food. She likes her food. She likes her snacks. Good girl. But yeah, this is Meeple, folks. Feel free to clip. Uh, feel free to clip anything with Meeple. I, I would love to see clips of Meeple. Yeah, she is a good girl. Uh, just a very, a very loving personality. Um, just like our other pug, Bruno. Uh, hopefully her brother is the same way. I mean, she is... A wonderful pug uh just under two two years old hi meeple okay do you want to sleep again she looks a little tired here I'll, you can sit in my lap you're a good girl all right we're gonna take a look at this case oh you want to go back into it okay you're curious huh? this is not food baby baby girl not food so as you can see, uh, this game does not come with pugs, folks. Uh, this is my pug, so <laughs> get your own pug, no. Uh, so this is the uh, evidence bag here, unsolved case files. We've got all kinds, oh, bonus envelope. Do not open until you complete your objectives. This is the unsolved case file. This is, um, you can check out more information. They have a bunch of these cases as well. Uh, this is first of like dozens, I think. Um, you just go check out the website and you'll see um, you know, what other mysteries you have to solve and <laughs> roll for good. But what if it is food? Said every dog, whatever an owner does. <laughs> oh, so true. Okay. Meeple's going back to bed, uh, going back to sleep on my lap. Uh, unsolved case files. So instructions, take a quick look at this. Unsolved case files is a game that lets you solve a fictional crime using the evidence and documentation from the cold case file. So the case number. Uh, oh, objective number one, prove Bones is innocent, one of three. When you can prove Bones is innocent, visit this webpage to verify it, okay? And then after proving Bones could not be the killer, you may open bonus envelope A. All right, so here's an evidence envelope, which is sealed, okay? Oh, and here is the victim. This is Harmony Ashcroft, okay? Here's the case file inventory list, all the things that... Um, the Riverdale Police Department came across. Ah, a little newspaper clipping. So, ooh, this actually does feel like a newspaper clipping. Oh my gosh. Very, okay, interesting. A local child psychologist murdered by Adam Grove, examiner, staff writer. A 28-year-old woman was killed last night in an altercation that took place in the parking lot behind Tully's restaurant around 9.30 p.m. Police had, have identified the victim as local child psychologist Harmony Ashcroft. Uh, Miss Ashcroft was attending the rehearsal dinner for her wedding to Christian Peterson, which was scheduled for today at St. Michael's Church. Uh, police investigators have determined her death to be the result of a blunt impact to the head. According to Detective J Jack Stason with the Riverdale Police Department, the injuries are consistent with a face-to-face -face physical altercation with another, with another person. We've ruled out accidental causes and have launched a full homicide investigation. The victim's body was discovered by a member of the wait staff while taking out the garbage. He rushed inside to inform the wedding party, resulting in a massive panic as about 30 people rushed toward the back parking lot to help the victim. And uh, so that's just the very start of it. Um, the rest of the article here. Oh, this is so, wow, the detail this is. 
fantastic. I mean, it seriously, it's like a newspaper, a, a real newspaper has been clipped. Wow. Uh, Riverdale Police Department evidence property custody uh, d document. So uh, diamond engagement ring. Sad, sad, sad. So this is from name of person from whom received William Bones McBride. Found in William McBride's hand in Grant Park. Oh, okay. So we have to prove that uh, Bones is innocent. Uh, here is the in wedding invitation. You're invited to Harmony Christian's rehearsal dinner. Okay. Uh, here is the autopsy, the coroner's report. Uh, skull fracture. The victim appears to be 28 years old. Good health. Blood force trauma to the right eye anterior and anterior scalp. Internal injuries, cause of death, manner of death, and then the officers on the case. Uh, this is William Joseph McBride, um, alias Bones. He's been convicted. Uh, fingerprints, date of the DOB, um, so forth. Map. Okay, there. here's where uh, Rambo's Bar was, Grab Park Tully's here, and then different uh, other points of interest. Yeah, Almond says uh, that is all important data. All needs to be located, looked at twice um, because on first glance, something could be missed. Oh, absolutely. And again, I'm terrible at these games, any kind of deduction detective game. So if I would, you know, if I was to play this on stream, I would ask you all for help because uh, I did one recently where, you know, chat uh, specifically, um, who was it? Um Gosh, I forgot who it was that really helped me out, but they basically solved the crime. Uh, here's another newspaper clipping, Bones McBride arrested for murder. Um, and our job is to, uh, to um, uh, prove that he's innocent, okay? A 24 year old man, William Bones McBride has been arrested for murder of local child psychologist, Harmony Ashcroft. Um, do, 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 appear, and then uh, it appeared that the assailant's motive for the attack was monetary. McBride has a long history of petty crime in Riverdale, and all our evidence indicates that he was trying to get money and or valuables from the victim and struck her in the face with a blow so powerful it caved in her skull. He was then able to easily take the victim's engagement ring from her, then flee on foot, uh, Police Chief Brock uh, Inman said. Oh, interesting. Uh, oh, yeah, Tim, thank you. To, yeah, it was Tim. Tim Riel was awesome. And to Live and Dice LA was also there uh, as well. So, yeah, shout out to Tim for doing that. Okay, uh, here's Christian Peterson, person of interest. Wow, man, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Person of interest, photo. It uh, looks like a, a statement, witness statement form. Uh, I'm going to leave these paper clip together. Uh, there is Bones, our um, suspect that we need to um, clear his name. That's our objective. Uh, there's witness statement as well. Uh, here's another character, Rex Lat Ratcliffe. Don't know who he is yet. Andy Allen is in the house. Derek uh, Sivers. And that's that. So that is the cold case file, folks, for unsolvedcrimes.com. Uh, uh, unsolvedcasefiles.com. Uh, this is the first one we have to find out who has killed harmony ashcroft that is your preview friends and uh we have uh three objectives here uh bonus envelope a b and c so obviously after if we can clear um bones's name in the first one then we go to this one which will, i'm sure will lead to b and c objectives two and three as well okay so that is that. Thank you again for hanging out with me today, folks. I am going to... So uh, what I wanted to do was... Um, so what I wanted to do was play Medium from Greater Than Games. But um, I have a pug on my lap, so it's going to be a little difficult to do. Uh, Bing, yeah, it does look fun, right? Um, but I, I'll give you... We'll, we'll do like a short preview of this. We'll just we'll play a couple of turns just so you can get a flavor of the game. Because this is a, one of our favorite uh, party slash word games that Michelle, Lauren, and I uh, love. And um, what you do is... Um, I'm gonna. We each have a hand of cards right here. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. The cold case can wait till later. All right. So everyone has a hand of cards. And what you're going to do is... The player on your left or right, depending on which way the, the game is going, um, I think you switch directions after every couple of turns or something, or 
whatever. Um, player on your left, you're going to have a hand of cards. You're going to choose one word from your hand. And then the other player also has a hand, and they will choose a card. Like so forth. Okay. Here's a deck. And what you're going to do is you're going to find the medium between those words. So if I had played chalk and you had played train, we have to come up with one word that's that relates to both of them, basically. So let's say, um, for example, it's a really simple example. If the words were small and large, we could, we could say medium. And, and if we do that, we're going to count down three, two, one, and say our word. If we say the same word at the same time, we have, we're going to gain points, like five points. If not, then we have, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So between you and me, chat, chalk and train, one word. I'm not going to look at the screen right now. I'm going to think, let's see, chalk and train, chalk and train. Okay. I've got a word. Give me one word folks that goes, but that relates to both of these medium. What is the medium between chalk and train? Uh, I got my word. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to go with it. Oh, GB Glazer says glide. Oh, oh man. I wish I would have said that. I didn't say that, obviously. Anyone else? We're going to go with GB. So GB, your word is glide. We would have said three, two, one. You say glide. At the same time, I would have said drawing. Okay. So we don't get the full points. Now we get a second shot, but... Now we're going to use the words, what I said and you said. So drawing is the first word. The second word is glide. Drawing and glide. What is a medium between drawing and glide? We're going to do it again. What is the medium between drawing and glide? I'm, I think I have one right now. Yeah. Okay. I've got one. Drawing and glide. Anyone. I'll give you a second. Oh, roll for crit. That was... Uh, Oh, Bing said pen. I was thinking pen or pencil. I went with uh, pencil, but we're going to say we, we got that. So I, I, I'll we'll just, just so we can get a couple of uh, more examples here. So that was going to give you points. And, oh, sorry, sorry, Pug. Um, there was like little uh, tokens here. I didn't get them out. So we would have gotten, instead of six points is the full one. Uh, for the second round, you get four points and so forth. So it is a competitive game, but it's got that cooperative element during the game, you're really trying to match with your opponents uh, or with your, you know, fellow uh, players here. So then what the, what you would do, you, you know, obviously discard these, draw more cards and do it again. Well, let's do another one here. This time I'm actually going to, I'll just randomly choose one for you all. And then I'm actually going to look at mine. Okay, here, I'll do this one. Okay, so let's find the medium, friends. I've played England and you have randomly played Nose. England and Nose. Okay, I've got mine. Oh, man. Yeah. What's the medium between England and those? And I'll go, uh, I'll wait for a couple of answers and we'll see if we can uh, do this. Yeah, I'm on that. That's, uh, it's interesting because it shows a different thought patterns on the table. Yeah, that's totally it. And all the times we've played it, it's so funny to see what, uh, you know, how everyone, you know, goes uh, in, in their answers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> GP says stuffy. And then with the asterisk, sorry to any English folks here. No, totally cool. Um, I was actually thinking, uh, soccer. And now that I think about it, it, it would have been better if it, it would have been head. Cause I was thinking like you, you know, when you hit the soccer ball uh, or football, uh, with your head, but I, I like that stuffy. And that, that's a great answer. I mean, yeah, again, apologies to our English friends here. Uh, but okay. So English and nose, we did not do it. So now we have soccer and stuffy soccer and stuffy and I, I've got one already hopefully we'll, we'll see if we, we can do this soccer and stuffy what is the medium between soccer and stuffy uh, so this would be for fewer points soccer and stuffy uh roll for crit yes we have played with the flowers I, I was gonna uh, I was gonna share with those uh next um and I'll get those ready here oh you're, you're okay meeple soccer and stuffy uh, head. Oh, that's a good one. I was going to say, um, soccer and stuffy ball, but then I was thinking that's actually stuffing. Like, do you put stuffing in a ball? Which is, yeah. Locker room. Does that count? No, uh, it's gotta be one word, uh, to live in Dyson LA. I believe that's the rule. One word, uh, for the medium. 
Okay. Uh, if you match on your second attempt, you get three or four points. And then you have one last chance for one or two points. Um, and then, yeah, you just do it again. Okay, locker room. Oh, locker room. <laughs> All mashed together. Nice. Oh, goal would have been a good one. Uh, after all, you should bring up new players with mixed. Yeah, absolutely. So here's the, let's, um, we were talking about the little abilities here. Uh, Psychic Link is one of them. Now, do you, I think you, you bring these in later in the game, right? Or is it um, an option? I forget. Extra special. Once you played a couple of, yeah, now you add in the um, extra uh, player powers here. Uh, Psychic Link. Clear Mind. Um, so clear mind is discard any number of cards from your hand, draw back up to six cards. So if you don't like the cards, you can, um, you know, redraw We're using that psychic link is play this card to join into another team's first mind meld attempt. If, if successful, take a first attempt token as well. So you can just jump in on someone else's mind meld. That, that's this process where you're trying to meld uh, minds and uh, grab points as well. So if you think you know the other people, players, then then you're set. Okay, so let's do another one, folks, and um, then we'll get out of here. Uh, I'll randomly choose yours. Uh, let me take a look at the deck. I will grab a couple of more of these. And let's see. Okay, here. We'll do this one. We'll do Halloween. Okay, Halloween, and you have chosen Train. Halloween Train. Hmm. Wow, I don't know of any. Anyone, Halloween and Train. Haunted, ooh, that's a good one. I like Haunted. Ghost, oh, yeah, a Halloween, yeah, nice. I like that haunted, because isn't there like a haunted train? I, I thought I've seen that before. Was also thinking, okay, so Bing and To Live and Die Sinela, you would have uh, mind melded there. Uh, you would have said, three, two, one, haunted. Boom. Vagrant Song. Oh, yeah, Vagrant Song. That's right. The, uh, a board game. Great reference, uh, GB Glazer. Uh, to hit one word, yeah. And it is, uh, <laughs> it's two words, I think, right? But uh, yeah. <laughs> I've heard of a few haunted train uh, around here. Yeah, I've heard of a, I thought they had a haunted train ride. Um, was that at Disneyland? Like haunted, or was it a uh, Knott's Berry Farm? Probably Knott's Berry Farm here in Southern California. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, medium, folks. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I've, I've missed. You have the extra player special power ESP cards, they call them. Uh, either Psychic Link or um, Clear Mind. It can play, it'll be played by two players. Um, and you don't use the ESP powers. Now, what you do is you go through the deck and then on uh, randomly shuffled into the last half of the deck are these crystal balls that are um, cracking, right? Well, you do one, two, and then on the third one, that's when the game is gonna end. And you actually have, I think there's a dozen different sets. Actually, more than that. There are 15 different sets of words. So what you do is at the start, you randomly choose uh, two of them or the two player game, three of them, and you mash up all the, the sets uh, together. As you can see, they're numbered on the bottom here. I took number one, and I think I just took the first two. Yeah, number one and two, I just randomly put together. Uh, Bing says they have a uh, one near uh, here that quickly becomes the Polar Express ride after Halloween. Oh, nice. Uh, I've heard of a few haunted train rides. Oh, almost as legends. Oh, that would've been a good one. Uh, read one's about a myth of a ghost train with guests from long time ago. Interesting read. Oh, cool. So, wow, this this uh, table's getting a little messy. That That's what you have. That's what happens when you have a pug on your lap. Hey, Meeple, do you want to say hi to everyone or bye? She She's out cold, folks. She is out cold. Um, anyways, that's it. Uh, thank you for my first stream with uh, my uh, friend um, Meeple, our, our little baby girl um, uh, pug. And this has been Words on Wednesday. This is something I do every other Wednesday here, friends. I play a word-based game or two. Um, usually I do crossword puzzles, but I, I'm not gonna be able to type with uh, Meeple here. And uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Roll for Crete. Yeah, it's so wonderful that y'all can uh, see Meeple. Uh, she'll be back, I'm sure, for more streams with us. Um, we have looked at Letters to Margaret. Uh, be sure to check that out uh, by Haley Gold. We saw the first couple of uh, clues here. Whoa, there, the evidence folder is... Uh, Full of stuff, unsolved case files at unsolvedcasefiles.com. Uh, if you're into uh, solving a cold case, being a detective, check that out. And we also looked at The Legend of Antipo by Shingen Core. 
wonderful graphic novel. I highly recommend this one. This is uh, uh, one of the best reads I did, I had of last year. Um, I don't read as much as I, I would like to. And that's part of the reason why I'm doing Words on Wednesday again, just to spark that love of reading that I've had throughout my entire life um, and writing as well. But um, this, this is so good. And we also did a quick couple of rounds of Medium, a um, mind reading party game. So it's, it's a word-based game. So that's why we are showing it off today. Thank you again for hanging out with me, folks. Uh, let's find someone to raid. And then, oh, by the way, I'm going to be back tonight. Maybe Meeple will be too, but we're going to be playing a game. Uh, my buddy Darryl B. Gaiman's coming in, uh, coming in the studio. And we're going to be playing Anno 1800. Uh, this game I've been really looking forward to. Heard nothing but great things about it. Uh, Martin Wallace game. Uh, Daryl's going to um, teach it and we're going to play it. A two-player game tonight. That's 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, right back here on Tabletop tonight. Uh, I'm going to find someone to raid. Um, in Flames has the Anno. Yeah, I've I've heard so many good things about Anno, and it's been on my um, short list of games I had to play. Um, one game that I played. You know, I got to hydrate, folks. I've got a little thing going on here. Um, Anno has been on my list since late last year. Or when it, when it come out la late last year or the early in the year. Um, but also Arc Nova was on my list. And oh, I got to play Arc Nova this weekend uh, with my friend Jeff. I want to shout out Jeff. Um, we played a two-player game at his place. It was about three hours uh, with a teach. Um, I can see that time going down. But wow, it, it is immediately shot up. Top 50 game of all time for me. And it's probably going to go higher with repeated plays. It was absolutely phenomenal. Lived up to all the hype. Uh, engine building, a uh, little set collection, tile lane, um, hand management. Uh, it had it all, and it's just in this really cool package. It's a it's a heavier game, more complex game. But for me, I it it was easy to learn. It was just it, through the gameplay. Uh, it was just you know there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts, and oh, if you really, I mean, it was uh, a brain burner in a the best sense of the word. Absolutely loved it. Arc Nova, highly recommend. Roll for crit. I need, really need to find a copy of Arc Nova. Yeah, I think it just came back into print on uh, Capstone. Uh, someone in my Discord channel mentioned that because they would ordered through Amazon, and another person had uh, said, "Hey, it's on a uh, Capstone." They got a new printing. And and speaking of, let me drop the link to our Discord, folks. That's a family friendly Discord. Join the fam bam. You're gonna see uh, photos of uh, our fur babies, including Meeple. We're gonna be posting some. Uh, I just posted one. Today. I'm trying not to overwhelm the uh, channel with uh, too many pictures of Meeple, uh, but everyone shares pictures of their fur babies there. We also talk about a lot about board games. Uh, we talk about Legos. Uh, Michelle and I have been in Legos lately. We talk about the food we eat. We share food photos. And we also talk about um, uh, board games and also have solo challenges. So Legends and um, James, they are the ones who spearhead our solo challenges. There's a different solo game every couple of weeks, and we just share our scores. It's it's a friendly competition, nothing you know hardcore or anything, but it's really cool to uh, play solo games and then share together. And what I really like about it, we our current one is Three Sisters, which is going to be ending soon. And Three Sisters, you know, just reading the thread that uh, people we have started there, it's been wonderful to learn all the different strategies people use and just to see how really. I mean, this Three Sisters is one of my favorite roll and write games of all time wonderful so please hang out with us in discord uh i'm gonna find someone to raid do 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 where's the raid button who is streaming right now who can we raid now boo do 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 uh board game yogi is on we love board game yogi we're gonna raid uh board game yogi right now and uh please stick around for the raid thank you for joining me and meeple she's asleep she's crashed out uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time, friends. Take care, and I'll see you back here later tonight for uh, Anno 1800. Bye now.